It's alumni weekend at BU. Simone is getting a special surprise. Damon is having to sit with his feelings. And JR is getting a rude awakening from his parentals. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another amazing All-American Homecoming video. Okay, let me calm it down because I'm a little bit hyped. But while I'm at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications if you are not a subscriber of the channel and you're new here. Welcome in. You're going to want to be a part of the tribe so go ahead and hit subscribe so we can get that out the way in this video we are breaking down episode four from all american homecoming season one the episodes just continue to get better and better and better and better and it don't even they didn't even start out bad so like it's just a it's just the excellence for me are y'all enjoying all american homecoming please let me know your thoughts before we even get into this video pause it jump down in the comment section and let me know how you feeling about all american homecoming thus far if you missed it i went live last week and i actually had coach Mark Marcus Turner or the actor who plays him in a live interview with you all in my live last week because I go live every Monday night to talk about the All-American Universe both All-American and All-American Homecoming episodes we break down we kiki we cut up I do a rant or two like I did last night honey but last week I was able to chat with one of the stars of the show and I have more coming so make sure you hit the subscribe button for show for show now and then I'll have that linked in the cards above in the description box down below so that you can check it out okay without further ado let's get into this episode episode it's alumni weekend at BU and it's so dope to see in this episode we get to see a little bit more from everybody's storyline whether it's getting a little backstory into coach Turner and auntie Amara a friend a mutual friend that they had back in the day back at school recognized them on campus and is connected with Amara and she's running back and bringing up old photos honey she's blurting out old news part of the thing that she starts off with is like oh I didn't know that y'all were you know back together when she sees them on campus together it's like oh oh so miss mama's got all the tea we need to be cool with her later on at the alumni dinner she's showing photos and she actually mentions how auntie amara missed out on a semester because she took a semester off which leads simone into thinking like oh yeah she definitely could have had a baby at this time and she could have taken the se semester off and then came back and there's like some amount of time that's unaccounted for and i'm so like being spent into knots when it comes to coach turner and auntie amara by the end of the episode she literally comes up to him like yo I need you to break it down to me what happened you went off to the minors you broke up with me you never gave me kind of any kind of explanation and I really kind of need that now what happened and all he responds is like oh can we just leave the past in the past no we can't which is why I'm asking you in the present do you need me to repeat it oh I love me some coach Turner but um sir you gonna have to uh open up them lips and, and let me know what's going on because you clearly love this woman you clearly are into this woman you want to protect this woman the way he looks at this woman it's like so what's stopping us from being together and being happy i'm just trying to be clear you're clearly jealous because when her little old student who is way too forward and way i don't like the little student boy at all i can't remember his name y'all i don't want to remember his name but the way he's talking about if when it's when i take you on a date you're gonna know sir you're not gonna take me on no date you're a fetus cut it out Ugh. i don't know y'all something about him whether it's, it's his arrogance or something that i'm just not feeling and then of course i do believe that auntie amara is coach turner's girl anyway so coach turner you was jealous of this boy you walk over here you made a note of how young he is and how you was running interference because of that but you don't want to have a conversation about what happened so that y'all can move forward yeah we're gonna have to address this mm-hmm we're gonna have to address it we don't have to do it right now but we will come back to it posted note keisha and cam were so adorable in this episode i think that they have the perfect personalities and sentiments for each other keisha is a smart ass that don't take no sh cam is a smart ass that don't take no well he he more of a smart ass that just like to lean into the ass part of it <laughs> he's rude he's outlandish sometimes he's outspoken and he needs somebody to tell him what it is and what it ain't and Keisha does so in this episode he admits that he decided to go ahead and get his aneurysm treated by getting it cut out and Keisha lets him know all of the medical issues that could arise and all the problems with making that decision and lets him know that's not a decision that you make rashly of course he throws another tantrum and then walks out of her room but then comes back later on after he goes through and does well at the baseball game which shout out to the subby i cannot remember the name of who but a few of y'all actually said this from the very beginning that y'all could see cam playing baseball in this episode we learned that he used to play baseball when he was younger but then he feels like football is a real sport so we could definitely see him making a transition to the baseball team now that he's decided not to go ahead and get that surgery and he can still play baseball with the aneurysm in his head but going back to keisha and cam specifically she breaks all this down he gets an attitude and then ultimately 
like the the course of the day, the course of the weekend really weighs on him. He decides not to get the surgery anymore. And then he doubles back to make sure that he lets her know. And that's his little sideways way of apologizing as well. I love how Keisha noted at the beginning of the episode, like you don't get to apologize to me by putting my bed on a post-it note on my door. And he's learning, like as they go along, Keisha's having to check him, check him, check him. And he's learning, he's coming along. In this episode, I really feel like Cam was given that nobody has really like loved him like this before. Like, and we don't know what Cam's romantic history is, right? Like we didn't get to see any of that when he was at South Crenshaw. So we don't know if this is his first, potentially his first real girlfriend, if he was just out here smashing people, if he was a virgin before, we don't know any of that kind of stuff. But I love how we're seeing him and Keisha interact because she seems like the perfect balance for what could be this very narcissistic ego driven boy with a really sweet heart. She feels like a really great balance for that. And he seems to really respect her and is growing in love for her. So I love to see it. Let me find out I'm about to have another ship out here when I have been adamantly saying no more ships, no more ships for me. But Kamisha is that girl and I'm excited about them. Now we didn't get as much about Thea in this episode as we did in the previous episode, but Thea and uh, Simone actually have to compete in a doubles match against her grandmother and her grandmother's partner. And come to find out her grandmother requested Simone because words getting around town of how good Simone is. But Thea doesn't actually let on about all of this. She's definitely hiding this up until the time where they actually have to perform. And it's interesting because I think that Thea is hiding from the shadow of her family who has also donated the Sinus facility and has created a big name. We already know by last episode that Thea feels very alone. She has no friends. So I definitely could see like while we're getting Thea and Simone going towards friendship, because Simone is actually doing good and does really shine and even her grandmother knowing it, I could see Thea starting to develop some type of resentment because she's already in a place where she doesn't feel like she gets her just due or she gets enough notoriety just on her own talents or being there. Now also when we're talking about some of the children or the grandchildren but now I'm going to switch to the children of parents who might not actually see their child for who they actually are and the amazingness that they are and I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all that because I'm not necessarily feeling JR y'all. I just am looking at him side eyed. I've been looking at him him side eye. so and then the preview for next episode don't help because he be coming for Nate in that little trailer but for the purposes of this breakdown JR is struggling with his dad in that his dad one was keeping a big secret from him that he learns by the end of the episode he learns that his parents are getting a divorce but his dad goes out of his way to lie to him about where he is when he's supposed to go to the Braves game his dad is giving extra attention to Damon and showing how he really appreciates Damon he goes as far as to write in front of him say you're going to be the reason why this team succeeds and you're going to change the trajectory of this team anything that you need we have your back and we're going to support you and I'm just like sir you could have pulled him to the side for that you do not need to make that proclamation in front of your son who already feels like he's in Damon's shadow when it comes to baseball and if you don't know that then that's also a strike number two for you because you should know that why aren't you checking in on your son one thing that I will say about parents like when they're coming to a place where they're trying about to go into a divorce or struggling with something within their relationships I think more parents neglect how they can prep their kids for certain things like that by being more intentional by checking in like there's no reason why you saying that you and your wife have been having problems for years but yet your son doesn't feel like he can actually talk to you or really be connected with you because one of the first things that children of divorce feel is they feel like one it could be their fault it feels like they're completely losing out and he could have bridged this gap and really softened the blow for this divorce that's coming if he had developed a stronger relationship and made JR feel like a priority within his life before he announced this so he 100% deserves all the smoke that JR is given now JR one thing about him y'all he didn't make it clear that he wasn't interested in Simone when Damon is tap dancing around the idea of JR and Simone sneaking around or doing something or what's going on or like just like lightly inquiring JR literally responds she has a boyfriend she's unavailable for you and me sir why don't you tell him that you're not interested in her why didn't you do that that's a note that I want to make y'all because I feel like we're gonna have that come up soon like I know we're already gonna get that it's in the preview for next week's episode where Damon is actually asking Simone about him but then also I think it's going to be a thing that clashes and some of y'all have said that some of y'all have said that y'all think that JR is feeling Simone but I haven't actually seen it yet but again I'm also looking at him like I don't trust him anyway so that could be why I missed it now the biggest thing of this episode is that Jordan comes to surprise Simone and y'all yes there are some awkward moments yes 
Jordan was caught a couple like long looks at this alumni dinner. He walks in and Simone is sleep on Damon. Girl, 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 what is happening? And Damon, don't think we ain't catch the fact that you woke up, saw her right there. You liked the actual scenery and decided you was gonna stay in this little sequence for a little bit. Don't get too comfortable, okay? Don't get too comfortable. Like I'm just now getting comfortable with you being her friend because you really are showing up and supporting her in the way that my girl needs to be supported. But don't get too comfortable, Damon. Sims because I will be back on your head okay but Jordan shows up that moment happens Simone recovers beautifully and she cre recreates the whole moment and Jordan kind of rolls with it I'm not even gonna lie to y'all I was so surprised at the energy that Jordan had because I was waiting for him to come with that feisty rah-rah energy y'all know I kind of want him to swing on Damon yes I have said it multiple times I am toxic for it I can go ahead and admit to that some of the enemy wants to see Jordan swing on somebody other than Spencer James so that is what it is but he really has kind of neutral energy he does have a few moments where he gets frustrated with Simone he winds up leaving her at the alumni dinner after catching her looking at him across the way and then learning from Auntie Amara that she had a panic attack that he knew nothing about and feeling like she's actually keeping things from him and he points out in the note like he points out in that conversation like oh but did you didn't tell me about it but did Damon help you through it because she's like well I don't want to bar burden you with my problems and I don't want to bring you down and certain things like that's why I didn't tell you and side note Simone didn't call Jordan when she had a whole panic attack that she had never even experienced before yes she had the support of other people so there was people there to support her but her reasoning that she said was so that she didn't bring him down make him worried or any of those things and she handled it similar to how Olivia need to handle some of the things that's popping up for her Jen goes missing again you don't need to call Spencer boo you need to call Nurse Joy or your mama and handle it but back to All-American Homecoming because this episode just gave me so much life. I love All American Homecoming so much. Jordan's energy for the most part was very neutral. He got his hopes up a little bit when Simone finally admitted to part of what's going on with her and Damon and lets him know that, oh, she thinks that he is actually her cousin, could be Auntie Amara's son. But then she shortly finds out after that, after she actually confronts Auntie Amara about it, that no, that's not her son. And honestly, I believed her when she first said it, but now I didn't rewatch the episode three times, y'all. And she has this little blank stare that she has one when Simone leaves but then also another time when she's a shut down by coach Turner after she's asking about what happened and part of me feels like she's lying I think that she has had a baby so I want to believe her because she told Simone straight to her face but then I don't maybe I believe her that Damon ain't her child but she has had a child sis is definitely lying ultimately Simone and Jordan really do talk it out in this episode and I really love it because they're able to be very open and honest and confirm that they need open and honest communication if they're going to be able to make it with this long distance relationship and honestly I don't necessarily feel like there's something on Simone's end that's that great now I do see what people are pointing out at the end of the episode when Damon walks off with that girl Erica why they had to give her the name Erica why couldn't a trollop be named something else NK and girl yeah I don't know you but you're gonna be a trollop for now because because I said so I don't even need to give you a reason for that anywho I do notice that but I also feel like when she was staring at him she was also still confused with his new sudden desire to figure out who his parents are so part of me feels like she's thinking about like trying to beat him to this revelation or maybe thinking about how is she going to reveal to him or if she's going to reveal to him that she was already looking into some of those things because JR is looking into this so I feel like it was a lot more worry on her face that was more than tied to oh Dame is walking off with another girl and I'm jealous it felt very much so like weighted in something else especially because she immediately texts JR like yo it's not my auntie Amara so now the ball's in your court to figure this out but again that's just my perspective yes I'm a little bit biased because I'm team Jermon but also I have again rewatched that scene specifically three times and that's what I came up with I am looking forward to seeing Jordan more on campus <laughs> like I want him to come visit more like I get it that you are a little you know a, a little walk on over here on the football team but if that don't work out why don't you just go ahead and transfer to Brinkston sir because I kind of I like this uneasy energy that Damon had all <laughs> Uh, episode he's literally checking his phone to see if Simone texts him and thinking about Simone and it's like oh you so cute but not really because you need to back back this ain't your girl she could be your best friend but she not your girl oh so another note that I want to make y'all and I think I'm gonna wind up doing a separate video to talk more about this but a lot of people are saying that Simone is feeling Damon <laughs> honestly I feel like she's a little bit more oblivious than people want to give her credit for because if y'all be watch the beginning of the episode Damon asked her do she have a tennis match I think that he asked her because he 
wants to come and support her, but she don't. Okay, cool. She turns around and asks Cam and Keisha if they would want to come with her to watch the alumni matches. And Damon is literally looking like, yo, I'm sitting right here. You ain't asked me. But he doesn't say anything. And then everybody starts to disperse. And he's just kind of like, why the hell I didn't get asked? Because she ain't thinking about him like that. That's all I'm going to say. And ultimately, when I'm speaking about Jermone, it was so refreshing to see them together. It does feel like they're still very much in love with each other. She's still so very affirming and physical touch and words of affirmation, all of those love languages. So it's not like, I know that people are saying that Jermone's ship is sinking. I don't actually see it sinking anytime soon because they still seem so very much so connected and in, in love with each other. And Simone even says it. Like, Jordan's like, oh, I thought you were about to break up with me. She's like, boy, you ain't gonna get rid of me that easy. Pal, so here for it. But those are my thoughts, y'all, on episode four from All American Homecoming season one. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did I miss anything? Let me know, because maybe I need to give another subject video with something that you think would be a great topic for a separate video. If you made it all the way to the end and you have yet to subscribe, child, it's fine, I forgive you, but go ahead and do it right now. Mm-hmm, I'll wait. Appreciate you. Be sure to hit that like button before you go on and watch another All-American or All-American Homecoming video right here on Erica Vane TV, your number one source for All-American content on these here interwebs. I'll see you in the next one.